Hi, hey. Hank. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey, hey friends. Hey, everybody. Hi, Chuck. Hank. Chuck. Come on. God damn it. I cannot fuck it. It starts with a D, right? Vogo. Do Dova. 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 Hello, Dova. Nova. Like Dover, but with no, an A. D O V A H. Dova. Nova, like in Planet of the Apes. Right, there you go. Fine. Fuck it. It's, you can call whatever. <laughs> it's, Do it's Dova. Anyway. Dova. Uh, Thomas Dolby. Thomas Dolby. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know who the fuck that Hello, is. Hello, three listeners and uh, whoever else. I'm pretty sure maybe listened to a couple episodes and then stopped listening. Previous guests. But if you're still listening, hello. Welcome to the show. Sorry about last week. Uh, Blackmore and Brennan decided to de just destroy Craig's computer. Craig's computer couldn't handle another episode after Blackmore and Brennan. It just decided that its life was no longer worth it. That and I was using <laughs> a shitty program. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Uh... We're going to try not to recreate last week, but we're going to try and cover some of the things we covered last week. I have discovered something new in this last week. The guy who Me plays Jeff on The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Bob Newhart. No, Jeffrey... No, he was Jeff... the horse. Let's, let's... I sent him a message. He hasn't responded. Uh, but... Craig, you should look him up on YouTube because he's fucking amazing. I am uh, not trying to do anything extra this week. No offense. <laughs> this thing is uh, hanging by bamboo and cat hair right now. Fucking <laughs> spit and bubble gum. Yep. <laughs> I'm just waiting for like just like wisps of smoke to come past the screen. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> fuck! 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 Uh, Josh Robert Thompson. Josh Whedon. Okay. <laughs> he uh he does a mean fucking Morgan Freeman. Like it sounds exactly like Morgan Freeman, but he's got a new show since the late late show is now gone. Uh or is going to be gone. I'm not sure if they've stopped doing it yet or not. No, they got another Craig... guy. They got another guy? Yeah, the guy who played uh he was on a couple episodes of Doctor Who. Oh, I know. Yeah, and he the, was from uh, uh, the wrong uh, man. The one who has a uh, Stormageddon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stormageddon. I can't remember his name. He also did a show called uh, the, the Wrong, wrong Man's. Man's. The Wrong Guys. Yeah. No, Wrong Man's. Yeah, the Wrong Man's. Yeah, he was in that. I know what you're talking so, about. I haven't seen it though. Like Is they he... just needed to keep up with the fucking British host on an American late night show. Is that? Yeah, but... No, they so just got a good comedian, me? I guess, who was willing to take the job. According to Josh. Robert Thompson, well, they apparently changed it for him because they uh, didn't bring him back. And right. Jeff was an, Jeff, the robot, was like an integral part of the Late Late Show. That was that yeah, was for, some of the funniest dialogue yeah, was between him yeah, and Craig, Craig Ferguson. Craig Ferguson, that's not the same guy, so they're going to try to make new things for him. Yeah. I mean, you always change anyway, out the... Anytime, the anytime of, any late uh, night, every time you've ever seen a late night show, every time they change... Uh, Hosts, they change the band, they change the jokes. I mean, everything gets switched. Basically, this is a really bad time to watch to be a fan of late night. Craig Ferguson is gone. John Stewart is gone. Even though he's not late night, but he's prime time. And well, from Michael what I understand, is. they're basically changing the entire uh, formula for the, the Daily Show. Uh, Stephen Colbert is gone now. Who else is left in the last? Didn't Con is Conan still going, or did he retire too? Conan's still around. So Conan still Conan is like the last, the last bastion of the fucking good late night shows that we're used to. Well, since you're not paying attention to the news, Travis Letterman left, and Stephen Colbert's taken over for him. That's why the Stephen Colbert report is take is gone. <laughs> Yeah, Blair. but it's not going to be the same because Stephen oh. Colbert, as on the Colbert Report, was a character. Yeah, that's the whole reason you watch the Colbert Report. Okay. Stephen Colbert as himself, I don't know. I don't know if if Late Night or Tonight Show with fucking Stephen Colbert instead of David Letterman is going to be good or not. Well, 
I'm going to do this thing where I would normally pull up the picture that says don't judge a book by its cover, but that's what you're doing. So <laughs> just imagine that, audience, listening at home I'm, and viewing. All I'm saying is I don't know if I will enjoy it the same way I enjoyed the Stephen Colbert show because the Colbert show was satire. It was meant to be absurd and ridiculous, whereas who knows what the – the Letterman show was never like that. But they change it based on the host. It's not going to be the Well, I don't show. think it's going to be complete satire. I mean, it's a late show, so they're yeah, going to have host fans and stuff. I mean, it's not going to be the exact same. Well, I mean, I, that's what Colbert I like. Show, like Colbert show, like Colbert as the character we know him as on the Colbert sh- rapport is gone. Like, he's and already announced it. He's already said funny, that. So. <laughs> Look, I, have, I don't saying. watch late show all that much so because I got better things to do with my time. So if there's something Conan interesting, O'Brien I'll find it on YouTube later. Huh? I watched Conan O'Brien like on uh, last week on Thursday. They premiered the Deadpool trailer on Conan. Oh, no, my I God. Saw, I saw, the, the I saw, full, I like the that. Red Band trailer? Yeah. Oh, I got such a fucking hard on for that trailer. Jesus Christ, I want to watch that movie so bad. It looks like, so far, it looks like it's a good movie. I'm going to, I mean, I won't know until February, but I, I am excited for it right now. Did you happen to see the trailer trailer? Yeah. That was yeah the Red Band trailer. No, there was a trailer for the trailer. Yeah, is that the one where it, <laughs> it was... it, it's just him in the chair? Yeah, That's yeah, I saw trailer. that one too. And then there was also a uh, trailer for the Fantastic Four where he breaks in at the end to let you know that the trailer for the trailer was coming out. Uh, <laughs> I, I heard not that watch the Fantastic, I heard Fantastic Four. Four sucks ass. Well, it's got a Rotten Tomato score of like twenty seven. Yeah, I heard it was horrible. <laughs> so yeah. It, I heard it was like a ten percent Rotten Tomatoes. Possibly, yeah. It might have gotten worse. It either went down or up, one or the other. <laughs> oh no, twenty seven. Just... Twenty seven was Metacritic. Um, either that way, was Thursday, you know, I think. It does not look good. the The fucking the two Fantastic Four movies that came out were bad, and yeah. this is like a reboot for today's especially politically correct fandom world which is what it kind of feels like because they just just a bunch of no names that suddenly have nothing to do with the character so the dialogue in the trailer for the Fantastic Four already sucks ass the makeup effects already suck ass just from what I could see in the trailer and now they're forcing the same fucking agenda and everything else that's going on in comic books which I don't understand. Sorry about that. That was probably loud. Uh, which I don't understand. I do, but I don't. So it's like, why the fuck watch the Fantastic Four? Well, when I t- something I like Deadpool, like where my only complaint is that there's a little too much, it's a little too CGI heavy on Deadpool himself. But with what they've got going on, there's really no way to get around that. I personally, I did you guys see Thanos? Have you seen a picture of Thanos? Does he look like shit? Is that just, or is that just me? We had Thanos. No, it wasn't Thanos. That's uh, Apocalypse. Is that supposed to be Apocalypse? Not Thanos. X Men. That's no. Thanos was Not... in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and yeah, Avengers. No, have you seen? I think that's supposed to be for the new X Men, the next one. No, the new X Men Th- character. Oh. That's not Thanos. That's Apocalypse. Oh. Who is a normal-sized dude and looks like a fucking Kree or fucking Mr. Ice or Mr. Freeze from the fucking Batman Mr. movie. Ice. <laughs> As, and have you seen the picture? It looks no. exactly like Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger's Mr. Freeze from the Batman movie. It's fucking terrible. Cosplayers have done... A tremendous job with Mr. Well, you, you know they uh, haven't put the special effects to it yet, right? That's just a costume picture you guys are seeing. No, that's in the trailer. Oh, that's how he looked in the trailer. It's terrible. Trailer. I haven't watched any X Men since like one, so I don't really care. Honestly, I liked uh, Days of Future Past, and I I kind of got into Wolverine. The Wolverine story, the Wolverine movie right before Days of Future Past. Was that the origin one? Maybe. Uh, but X-Men 1 was, eh. 
It was exciting at the time. X Men two and three was absolute fucking shit, especially when they had Deadpool. His his first appearance. They're just gonna pretend like he never appeared in any other Marvel movie, even though he did in fucking three. And they just gave him a bunch of powers he never had. Like he can shoot shit out of his eyes like Cyclops. Since when? <laughs> so, and I don't I don't fucking get it. And then first class, first class was just a slap in the face for anybody who ever read the astonishing X-Men or the amazing X-Men or the uncanny X-Men. First class was just like, oh, all that shit that you know about the first team of the X-Men eh, didn't happen. Well, see, you're running into the same problem that all the really goofy nerds run into is you can't fucking expect it to be like the comic books or have think the comic books have anything to do with it. That's why it's called the Marvel Cinematic Universe and not the Marvel Comic Universe. I would like it if they didn't. I oh, can, and- I can, I totally get that. But to have Havoc in first class and not Scott Summers, Cyclops, is bullshit. Because Havoc wasn't even introduced for fucking years after the first X-Men came out. The first team of the X-Men was Nightcrawler, Storm, Jean Grey, The Beast, and Cyclops. That was the first team. Uh Uh-oh. Bare bones in the ice. Craig, don't do it. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. (laughs) Don't do it. You got to end up. (laughs) Computers. This is within the program I'm already running, so it's all right. Oh, okay. So you're safe. All right. No, I, you know, I mean, the, the, I, I have given up because I can't keep up on it anymore. So I think it's just safer that way. <laughs> I just enjoy it for whatever it is. And if I don't enjoy it, so, you know, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm only, I have nothing to look forward to right now until December and hopefully there's new Star Wars. That's all I really am looking forward to. I won't see, I won't see that in theaters. You want to see Star Wars in a the theater? No. Why is that? I did the I did episodes one, two, and three, or one and two in the theater. Well, there's your and problem. I was <laughs> I was so fucking disappointed and so let down. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Fucking I... super nerd. I was so let down in the first two movies. I was let down after after episode one, to be honest with you. I was hoping episode two would be different. It wasn't. It was worse. Well, ever, so that everyone, now I'll just wait till it comes out on fucking Xbox and I'll fucking rent it. Well, I, you, you're not the only one, dude. I think almost everybody universally dislikes one, two, and three. <laughs> three was a, like if there was a complete movie in all three of those episodes. There was one complete good movie in all three. If you cut out all the bullshit romance stuff, if you cut out all the fucking bullshit Jar Jar Bink stuff, if you cut out all the fucking bullshit midichlorian stuff, there was one good movie worth of of footage. Uh, so that's well, yeah. that's my tirade. All right. Well, um, you know that they now have season eight of Doctor Who on Netflix, so you guys could get on that. And uh, I watched Mar- season eight. <laughs> Craig hasn't seen season eight. Not my DVR. I, I did not. I did not name names. Travis, I was just throwing that out there. <laughs> I'm naming names. Listen, he's fucking. fucking he's putting the nerd <laughs> thing on on my my thing. I'm naming names. God damn it, Craig, you're the one that's. <laughs> I, I was keeping it fucking caught up. Dude. I was just keeping it quiet. I'm a I'm gonna start fucking sending out spoilers now just to <laughs> fucking ruin it for Craig. How are you gonna send them out? He's right here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna blurt him? shit out on the show just at random. Remember how I told you you're off the show this week? <laughs> <laughs> Can't kick me off. Oh, I do have that ability. So I'll find so a way. Craig, since uh I'll we find a way. Did you see that they're I guess they're saying that Fallout doesn't have a level cap, this new one? Yeah. So that's kind of neat. That a, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. Well, I mean, I guess when with Fallout 3 in New Vegas, if you had it on a computer, you could mod it where you didn't have a level cap. So it didn't matter. I mean, people were doing it anyways. So, yeah. 
Like, what did they, they said something about modding too. Like, there's a whole bunch of modding that's actually gonna. It's like open modding or something like that. Is that what it was? Their modding Before. system is gonna be garbage because what they're gonna do is they're gonna set up a modding system for the PS4 and the Xbox One, and then start charging you for mods because they tried to do it with Skyrim. Why? Why? Why would you do that? Because the they, idea of I mean, because I mean, it's a closed they, system. They can't get around it with a with a PC. You can get around that. They did it with fucking Minecraft. Yep. They took all the mods that were on Minecraft and they offered them on the Xbox 360 and now the Xbox One and PlayStation 4. But it's Microsoft, so. Yeah, so now you're paying fucking $10 for a texture pack. Yep. Which is basically what a mod is. It's In Minecraft, it's the only mods you get are texture packs. Well, that's Minecraft, though. Which, I mean, they had a lot of textures. I saw. I, I was actually reading some posts on Otaku or something like that, like the uh, mods you should really have for Fallout 3. They did some really good texture mods for them. They really, I mean, they, they cleaned up the uh, art really well, but of course it had, they only had, you know, years to do it, whatever. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, the thing is, those were all done independently, and basically you can get that game in 4K now yeah. via mods. You can, all the shit that's broken in the game, just like in uh, Skyrim, there's patches for Skyrim that are mods. Oh, yeah. They fix the game. Fix all the bullshit that's in there. They should leave that open. I really can, think they should. I don't think. And then you can turn in, uh, turn uh, all the dragons into Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah. Or, Th- or Thomas the Tank Engine. It depends yeah. what you want to do. You know. I personally enjoy Ra- Macho Man Randy Savage dragons. I watched the YouTube my, video I, for that mod, and it's fucking hilarious. I oh think yeah. One of my- one of my all-time favorite mods was for uh, Left 4 Dead was the Teletubbies. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was good. Every time you kill one, they'd blow up in rainbows. I thought that was just fine. Goddamn fantastic. <laughs> That's creepy. I find the Teletubbies creepy. Oh, they were fucking Somebody... creepy, even in the game, dude, because all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Tinky Winky's coming and attacking your ass. It was hilarious. <laughs> Somebody made a... Uh... A video of the black and white of a black and they took the Teletubbies, made it black and white, and then put, and put Joy, Division Joy Division. That's right. Yeah, yeah. They and it Division. is Cre- disturbing as fuck. Oh, it's fucking hilarious. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't like, know what a Joy Division is. Fuel. You don't know Joy Division? Never heard of them. Most of, one of the most depressing what? bands from the eighties. <laughs> That's like goth 101. Yeah, well, that's why we're not goth. I dated a girl who loved Joy Division, so... Do you see any guy liner on me? (laughs) What the fuck do you mean goth 101? I'm wearing a red shirt, black hair. (laughs) Yeah, I don't... Guy Fawkes. I dated a girl back in the early 90s that she fucking loved Joy Division. I'm nowhere near Guy Fawkes. Dennis is is closer to Guy Fawkes than I am. Yeah, I don't know. With his pointy mustache. Hey, this was a lot of fucking hard work, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I dated a girl who a lot of combing issues, dude. That had a Bauhaus to tattoo. This and this was the ironic part is there's not even wax in this motherfucker. It just grows like this now. <laughs> it literally just now grows sideways. <laughs> a lot of combing, a lot of fucking pressure to get this son of a bitch to do it. Dennis is literally the mustache master now. <laughs> Literally, the mustache master. I the, the funny part is when I wake up in the morning, I always have one that bends all the way down. It looks really weird. It's, it's fucking up down thing. It's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys and your Bauhaus and your facial hair and your Joy Division. I, I like how you pull off. You don't know Joy Division, but you knew what a fucking Bauhaus was. Really? Well, that's because Travis <laughs> just mentioned it. So, <laughs> yeah, I mentioned the girl that i dated that had a joy that had a bauhaus tattoo but i have heard of them before that because they were on they were mentioned on venture brothers Ba- Joy Division is basically everything that post rock wants to be, like the, the post rock things people want to be, except they were clinically depressed. Right, 
that's not that. As soon as I get this other program up and running, okay. I'm gonna mute your ass so oh fucking God. fast when you not fly all that night. Again. It's gonna be in my head. Love. <laughs> God damn it! I hated that song when it came out, and I hate it more now. I just found Fuck the mute it. button. That was such a passion. I remember working as a bouncer at a club when all the goth kids would come in, and that fucking song was constantly over and over again being played and it's just like oh my god i hate it so much <laughs> love love will tear us apart okay it sounds, like eeyore. it sounds like someone said hey eeyore get behind the fucking mic Stop singing, buddy. Man, you guys i tell Looks you like <laughs> oh i'm sorry. it's just fucking horrible lost my tail <laughs> Nobody wants to play with Eeyore. <laughs> Craig has quit the show. <laughs> I've gone into producer mode. I'm staying behind the camera. <laughs> I'm not putting up with this shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, be like Nick. So, and for God, you know? Huh? Ooh. So, I read an article this week that I thought. I think. We should bring back. I guess it's still somewhat legal in all fifty states. Is mutual combat? Jesus fucking Christ! Yes. <laughs> it's, that's what uh, lets Alex Jones run around in Seattle and beat up people. Phoenix Jones? Is that his name? Phoenix Jones? Alex, Alex Jones, Jones is a him? psychopath who lives on the internet and talks to Pierce. Phoenix Moore Jones and... is a and Phoenix Jones is a psychopath that lives in Seattle. I mean, yeah. really? I mean, he he's lives not in much real different. Life. <laughs> but evidently it, the, the uh it works that uh if two people i forget how the law actually works it's uh if two people are in a confrontation and it becomes hot-blooded you can uh call out the other person to fight unarmed and if the police i challenge you to a duel sir exactly uh, and if the police is okay it's completely legal i think it would be a great idea personally because i everyone who talks shit you know, it's like, let's go outside then. Officer, please step outside with us so you can watch this while I beat him senseless. <laughs> well, that's, that's because you're a violent Neanderthal. I am not a violent Neanderthal. I just think it'd be... A, it, <laughs> you always watch all these... How many Rockstar videos have you guys... Is it Rockstar? Is that what it is? Those videos where people are just throwing fights in, like, McDonald's all the time? I mean, no, that's fucking bum fights. No, it's not bum fights. Bum fights is outside and bums fighting. And I just I think it's called Rockstar. Oh, you see the kids. No, it's, you know, it's world hip hop. Huh? It's world hip hop. It's world star hip hop or something like oh, that. Oh, whatever the fuck it's called. I don't give a shit. I'm just saying. It's... You always see these. Dr it it would be so much better if you could just go. Fuck it. Let's go outside. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, you heard me. Come on, I challenge you. Let's go. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel, sir. Exactly. And everyone just carries around one light white glove so you can slap them upside the head with it. <laughs> Problem is, we don't live in a, a fucking civilized society anymore, so shit like that doesn't work. Like oh, that, no, we're, that we're worked for a society that was built on the fact that we're they were fucking civilized. And if you challenged, if you challenged a man to duel to a duel, and either fucking guns, swords, or fucking fisticuffs, you could guarantee that that's all it was going to be. It was going to be first blood, fights over. Go fuck yourself if you lose. Now it's like first blood, fight continues. You turn around, you get shot because the fucking guy can't fucking handle losing. Well, that's why the cops are there. They become they, they get to be the ref. That's what they're. <laughs> that way, no one can jump in. There's a. I mean, I guess back. I mean, it started. I guess I was reading the whole thing. Is guess it used to be a big thing even in high, in schools. They used to have boxing matches for stuff like that, which I think still would be a great idea. Think back to all the stories of the guys at fucking Modern. Oh, yeah. Let's go no, to I was, fucking I was rock there pile and, and duke it out and then go back to work and we're friends. Yep. Uh, well, except for well, one guy we were with. He got in a final. He fought a lot of people, lost all the time, and no one still liked him even afterwards. I mean, it didn't really change anything. Who was that? <laughs> really? Terry McGee. I forget. Scott, you... <laughs> oh, he didn't get in fights though. He just fucking. You want to fucking shit? I saw three. 
at least three with him. He lost every time. <laughs> but well, yeah, that was back in the press. I didn't get to see any of that. Oh yeah, I'm talking about like the old days, <laughs> where they fought out in the rock pit. <laughs> oh yeah, well I heard about those stories. No, I got to see the fight, a couple of them. They were quite funny because Scott <laughs> Stevie beat him up that one time. <laughs> <Don't you> really... <laughs> It doesn't surprise me. <laughs> you didn't know that story? <laughs> Stevie what? Beat... Stevie tell me, was... tell me the story of Stevie beating up Scott, because I don't know if I heard this or not. Okay, well, Scott, you know, Scott has a mouth on him, right? And Scott doesn't shut and the hell up. He's an annoying know. prick. Yeah, he's an annoying prick. So he starts, you know, he'll start if you fight, if you say something, or if he says something, and you and he, you realize, it, thanks, you know, you're right. That's exactly right. <laughs> I'll have you know, sir. <laughs> I do have a club hanging around. Don't think I don't. So, <laughs> um, it's like the exact opposite for me, though. <laughs> you were the one all offended about something a few minutes ago. <laughs> this is because uh, I called him a Neanderthal. I thought you would get a kick out of it. <laughs> I thought maybe I'd be able to drag you back onto the show. But no, no, he's still on the show. He'll, he'll just come from the shadows and say something and then disappear again. So he's like, he's just a verbal ninja. That's what he is. The verbal He'll just sit there and crack us up with his fucking textual <laughs> kicks, his textual shit talking. All right. He's anyway, so I was gonna say he's Stevie got the power. Scott. What can we do about it? Really seriously. Um, yeah. I've got the guns and the bombs. God damn, <laughs> it's America. <laughs> um, so Scott had always had the annoying habit of uh, if if some if he if he said something and he knew it annoyed you. He would fucking run it in the ground over and over and over and over and over again. Well, he said something about Stevie's wife and said it over and over and over again. And Stevie's like, all right, that's it. I can't lose this job, but after work, we're going to leave parking lot. We're going to go to some place, and I'm going to beat the living shit out of you. Scott went, which was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. I <laughs> just left. You know what I mean? <laughs> Knowing but, Stevie, like even if you're a big guy – and you think, I can take this guy. You can't. Because Stevie's <laughs> one of those weirdos that feels no pain. <laughs> and if he gets it in his head that he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Whether or not you fucking beat his face off, he's going to yeah. keep getting up. And he's going to keep coming at you until you're tired <laughs> enough that he can fuck your shit up. That's like, pretty much how he even admits that. He even says, yeah, I can't fight to save my life, but I can take a hit. So I'll just, I'll just take the hits until you get tired. Then I'll beat you up. <laughs> but anyways, so I, I guess Scott followed him to, like, uh, one of the res park uh, reserves, you know, one of the forest preserves around the area there. Right. <laughs> I guess jumped out of the car. Stevie's waiting for him. He, Scott tries to fucking play it off. It doesn't happen. And Stevie's like, he's like he, so Stevie grabs him. He goes, he's like a fucking eel. I try to grab onto him. He just squirm around in little circles. Couldn't hold on to him. <laughs> flip, he had flip flops on. They went flying off because it was a pain in the ass. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, I remember Scott getting into a fight with um, oh man, what was his name? The big black guy uh, that uh, uh, did the football team stuff that worked behind that worked with us. Uh, Louder in hell. Um, remember his name? Terry Crews. Not Terry Crews. <laughs> I wish I'd had a lot more fun with Terry Crews. Blind is a was bag. he in the hammer shop? No, he was in the Forge Press with me. I don't like, remember a lot of the guys in the Forge Press. Oh. I was, you couldn't forget him. He'd sang all friggin' day. <laughs> he was on the back row. <laughs> he was the, he was, he he left because he was, his son's like uh, uh, he was a foot he was a football coach for our high school and stuff. He did some other stuff too. But uh, Scott gave him shit one day. But he picked Scott up and bounced him off the garage doors. So <laughs> <laughs> he just what? <laughs> I was like, well, and he still and he still talks smack. I'm like, dude, seriously, what is your problem? Don't you get it? <laughs> I mean, seriously, don't. I almost got into it with him one day. I said, I'm going to beat you senseless. He goes, I don't think you can. I said, you don't know me very well. <laughs> For whatever reason, I think Scott knew better than to really push my buttons. It was more you, of, I would I give off the psychopath Travis, feeling. You give, like, off I'm the, not... you give off the essence of a postal worker. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not going to fight you. Yeah. I'm just going to kill you and then yeah. giggle my way to the prison. <laughs> like, so Scott never, he, he pushed the limits on shit that he knew wouldn't 
get me to fight mode, like his conspiracy theory shit. That just annoyed me. It didn't really do much to anger me. It just, it was just like, man, shut the fuck up. Chemtrails do not exist. You're a fucking idiot. No, I saw him. <laughs> no, he was just—he was just one of those guys. It was just horrible. Have you heard I, of Project Whatever? No, because I spend—I don't spend as much time on Google as you do. Well, Project oh, Whatever fuck. is a little different than you know the chemtrails. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, what killed me with him was is I—I I really there was times like you know if I just hit this pedal. I just say it's an accident. <laughs> All I had to say, well, it's just an accident. And he'd be gone. And <laughs> he pushed people that far. You can't, as many times as he caused problem problems, no one ever called him to task on it. And that was the problem. You know what I mean? And that's what I think a problem is with a lot of companies and jobs is there are people who instigate and no one wants to call call anybody out. Or if they do, you look like the asshole. Yeah, because you're afraid to lose your job. Whereas the mutual combat would be beneficial in that, in that respect, uh, where it's like, all right, so now I can get, I can, I can basically get this, uh, okayed from the higher ups. This is a problem I'm having. This is the fucking solution I see. The only solution I see being able, capable to clear this up. Me and him fucking fisticuffs outside right now. Let's get this cleared up and go back to work. I honestly think yep. a, a, just a, two sets of boxing gloves and a fucking just someplace you can stand. That's why, you know, you just pull, here, put these on. What? Start fighting. Get it over with. Let's go back to work. It should just be in every it should be in every building. I think it'd be the best thing to do. <laughs> Because everyone, you know what? Keep it up. You just, you just, you know, it's a problem because you start walking towards the gloves. So you just go grab these here. Here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm just drunk enough that, that scared me. <laughs> I don't get it. The, the door the opened and I was... wasn't paying. It. I had my back to it. It was Gabrielle, and I was like, "What the fuck?" Uh, that's how she's gonna speak the Since we lost it last week, do you guys mind doing redoing the plug for the Kickstarter? That'd be fine. Yes. All yes, right. Yes, we can. Yes, and if not yes, apparently... then I mind. Yes, that she can. Yes, I mind. <laughs> so, like, yes, I mind. <laughs> Tell her to go fuck herself. <laughs> it's also an opium one here. Yeah, that's the... the... It's the incense Craig, do you remember anything we talked the... about? Because I don't. The pumpkin spice. <laughs> it smells All right, crazy. buddy, I guess I'll, I'll I, do what I, I can. I, I can't see what we can do. <laughs> I'll go take care of the kid. Yeah, yeah right. And this time, take him, yeah, yeah, this time go I'll go out of the room and take care of the kid. I don't want you to leave me alone. You don't have a choice. Come sit down. It's okay, Dennis doesn't bite. <laughs> Not from this distance. I, I can't. I'll bring him down here in the other room. God, I like you should have left it a got the uh, thing. I like that. God box. Yeah, you're gonna need those again. Hello again. Hello. Hi, How are I'm you? I'm gonna change this so it doesn't say SJW in front of you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm changing this so it doesn't say SJW in front of you. Yeah, that was not. That was oh, only okay. for Travis. That was only for Travis because he was concerned so about yeah. the way Dennis talks. How you guys doing? Good. Awesome. Awesome. I'm sorry. I heard that you lost your um your episode because your computer crashed. Yep. Everything. Sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, technology is great, isn't it? <laughs> so, but you lost everything on your computer? Everything on my two terabyte hard drive. I got four other terabytes worth of hard drive stuff that were fine. What? Yeah. What was on it? Uh, all my like main music and stuff. No, that was all on. Well, I have everything in iTunes, so it wasn't that bad. Okay. So it's all streams, but uh, all I your had, porn gone. No, I had all my mystery science theater volumes of like like so many volumes of pornography. Yeah. <laughs> it was just it was all porn. He was so upset because he lost <laughs> it, it all. It, it was a special collection of clown midget porn. That was, well, it was a hard thing to get. It was a niche market. <laughs> <laughs> Clowns and midgets. And midget clowns. <laughs> oh, speaking it's of, a, real quick, Craig. Do oh, you want to go to a wrestling match off by us? Wait, what? 
next week next weekend there's a midget there's a extreme midget wrestling by or like about 10 minutes from my house have fun little person <laughs> little totally person wrestling <laughs> you have to be politically correct that's not it is called the e uh E W E M W Extreme Midget Wrestling. That's what that's they call it. That's dwarfism. That's not little personism. That's not what they call themselves. That's exactly what's on the flyer. It's called Extreme Midget Wrestling. What if they you were black fellas and they called themselves something else? Would you be proud and go into that too? There are some black fellas in there. It doesn't matter. They call themselves Extreme Midget Wrestlers. I'm just calling it what they call themselves. I, I didn't change. It's not my fault. They, they can call themselves whatever they want. I will abide by whatever they wanted to call themselves. <laughs> well, technically, I think. I think midget used to, I don't know if it still does, but it used to apply to a specific type of dwarfism where the the proportion, the, the body parts are proportionate to themselves. So it's like, it's like a miniature scale of the way that um, a body is, you know, like a, like a, without dwarfism, it, right. it, it's yeah. proportioned. Think, so you're right. it's just like a miniature I, scale. Yeah. I think like a miniature right. horse. Well, like I think dwarves horse. have normal heads and torsos, but their arms and legs are smaller. I don't know. I really right. Don't. right. And, and I think like like people who were, I don't know if they still, like I, I don't know if they're still considered midgets, but people who are midgets have smaller heads, smaller torsos. They're proportionate with the arms. They're just smaller scale. They just but look like they're farther away. Yeah. They just, they Small do. People, yeah. <laughs> they're they're usually just yeah. standing farther away. They're, they're actually average sized people who are just always far from somebody. <laughs> I think that's racist to call them average size. I think that's like calling them normal size nowadays. I can't. I've lo- I've lost track on what I should and shouldn't say. There's too many rules. I don't have enough time to read the book. I really don't because it's a big book. <laughs> they still print books. Yes. Oh. Yes. I'm pretty sure the PDF file too. I'm, that I'm would guessing. make more sense. Um, anyways. So, anyways, I guess. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome out right. of the show. So, welcome Thank out of the show. Thank you very much. Last week, since we lost everything, even though it, you got, I heard you you hit your goal. Awesome work. For, we hit, did. Yeah. We hit yeah. our goal. We hit our goal, and like, I think we had one backer the first the first day in the first twenty four hours or the second day, and then we had nobody, and then a couple days in after after Travis, you know, started talking about it on online. We had just like this talking. swarm of backers. It was just crazy. And then within five days, we reached our goal and exceeded it. So, wow! Thank awesome. you everybody That's for doing that. That was really cool. I'm glad that people are excited about it. You know, I'm excited about it. So, it's it's nice to to share that with 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 a bunch of people who you know feel feel the the enthusiasm that I have. You know. So. And, so, and especially and Stephen lost. Blackmore, because he he really uh, went ahead and you know furthered Travis's post and just like got the word out to all of the people that he talks to. So I, you know, it just it spread like wildfire after that, and it was just like one, two, three. I, I think I think Stephen did it because he didn't want to be harassed by Travis too much. I think it's more of a stalking issue than anything else. Maybe I I thought it was either that or he felt really bad for Travis because he knew that I'd be like, seeing him if if like it didn't work out. Like Travis, did you did you post anything? Could you ask your friends to post things? I don't know anybody. Could you could you ask people please? Uh, and he he just felt really bad for him. You know, after so. meeting Stephen Blackmore, I don't think that was the case. I think he was just being nice because uh, him wanting to see Travis in less misery, I don't think that's the case. No. And not after the way he signed the book. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He signed he my was, book saying that Travis really is nice. dead. really nice. Like, regardless, I don't – like, don't tell Travis. I don't care if he, if he wants to see Travis suffer or not. <laughs> I'm just happy. I'm we, just happy for myself. <laughs> we do have on paper that uh, – to Stephen Blackmore, Travis is officially dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stephen Blackmore said it was nice to meet me, and then Travis is dead to him. So, you know, <laughs> I, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so you have since you, we we lost everything, you have something called Gotha. <laughs> I have something. I have something called Gotha. <laughs> yes, that's what you're calling it. I'm just. So- <laughs> It's late. I'm tired. If I was male, it wouldn't sound as wrong. 
<laughs> yeah. If, if you have a habit of listening to Bauhaus and, you know. I have a, I have a condition. It's called goth. Yeah. <laughs> it's something some women have. Just, I happen to I would... be one of them. <laughs> I want to share it with people. <laughs> I want everyone yes. to have what I have. No, um, That's... It makes me feel better, that, like more secure that way. <laughs> no, I, I have I have started a campaign on Kickstarter for a project that I have named uh, very bluntly Goth Box. And it's basically a monthly subscription box that caters to the dark at heart. So people who have more of all the like alternative tastes, alternative lifestyles, people who like fun and kitschy stuff and still want something that is quality because I I do like to to dabble with kitschy stuff, but I do like to dabble with things that are actually usable and wearable and smell really nice and have good quality to them. So, I mean, every people are going to get a lot of different kinds of things in their boxes and it's something that really that that I'm really excited about because of that I know that people are really going to enjoy it so and I like to make people happy so <laughs> I want people to be like happy when they open their boxes and be like wow what is this this is really cool so not kind of uh, anti goth yeah like that's where I was going to go with that <laughs> you want them to be happy but you're hoping they stay goth enough to buy, continue buying the box <laughs> they, they may, they may not. I may, I may get one-time subscribers, and you know that's expected. I don't expect people like I didn't. I didn't expect to make a career out of this. If it, if it ever turned into something like that, like a small-scale career, that I'd be fine with that. But I, it really is just a project. Like it's something I wanted to see take off, and I wanted to see how it, how I did with it. But I, I didn't, I didn't make my my plans around whether or not this works works out as a a popular a popular thing that people do you know so if they want to subscribe every, like every month that's fine i have some people initially who just put faith in the project and they uh ordered a 3 month block of whatever they they ordered so that's really cool to me because they're like oh well this sounds like something i'd like to try and i want to try multiple multiple months and I guess they want to see what kind of variety they get month by month, because I could be, I like I could be anything to them, you know. I could I could just be like putting the same stuff in every week, uh, every month, or I could I could really switch it up and do a one eighty like month to month, which you know that's that's basically what I want to do. But we'll see how it's received. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm just happy that we reached our goal because now it's like. I'm going to definitely be funded when the campaign is over. And that means I can afford all of my supplies and go ahead with it. And then I have like a month grace period to get everything together. And I, I already started working on it, to be honest. So, you know, I'm making accessories, I'm making jewelry, I'm making um, like housewares, like um, baked enamel, like, you know, candle holders and stuff like that. And just things that are, a little more decorated than you might find in a store. So, okay. yeah. Pretty fun. Yeah. Sorry. I babble. <laughs> no, it's better. So, I, I so, mean, it seems like you're actually very comfortable right now <laughs> since your campaign is funded as compared to last week was a little bit. You were more I was all prepared spot. last week yeah. just to talk to anybody because I don't get out of the house. That, <laughs> I'm so goth that I don't get out of the house and I have a vitamin D deficiency. <laughs> That's how goth I am. No, I, I didn't know I was going to be talking. And Travis came upstairs and he's like, all right, come down and talk about goth box. And I was like, what? What? Who, 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 what? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> come on. And then he just kind of threw me into it. And I was like like slumming it in my pajamas. And I was like, all right, I'll just, you know. And I like threw a hat on because I looked like. I don't know. I, I looked like, like I I'd just been in a war, like through a war. Like, like I looked crazy. <laughs> you were just trying to cover up the scurvy. Exactly. I had mange. I was like, you know, <laughs> I don't want to look that goth. But um, yeah. So I I'm I'm actually less comfortable now. Maybe maybe it was better to to not be prepared, and be thrown <laughs> into a conversation than be like, all right. 
I've, I'm going to be talking about this again and like, you know, <laughs> what do I say? So it's hard for me to replicate um, a spot or like conversation. So I, you know, I don't know. I don't really know how to, how to interview properly. So, so uh, <laughs> you have different types of goth boxes, right? You have a, like just a pretty much basic goth box. You have a steam pump, steam punk box. You have, um, pumpkin. I have multiple what? boxes. I'm a <laughs> female with five boxes. <laughs> Which is I a rare. We're actually, <laughs> and they're all so, different. So this Kickstarter is for your, your uh, surgery, is what condition. you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so we can fix the goth box you have, the five goth boxes. So this boxes is to have. get you into Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be an oddity. <laughs> My own oddity. I have, okay, so what we're offering is uh, your traditional goth box. It's called That's Pretty Goth of You Box because that's pretty goth of somebody if they, they want that. And then we have a box that is oriented around the do-it-yourselfers, and that's called the Crafty Minx box, because people who like to sew or just like do different projects around the house, bake, cook, they like recipes, they like figuring stuff out themselves, um, they're handy. They, they'd be more inclined to get that box because I'm going to be including certain little projects in it. Maybe a fun little um, pattern or something something of that nature that, that they can they can make. I'll, I'll have all the supplies in there and it, it'll be something that they haven't made before and you know it'll it'll end up with really cute results and it's something they can they can have as a keepsake and you know treasure. Um, but they did it themselves. So I have um, a steampunk oriented box. I say it's geared around steampunk, you know, because gears. But um, that's really bad. But I'm so, um, zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's my pun. No, so, uh, I have a steampunk Sammy box, and that's for people who wish that they lived in a totally different kind of world. <laughs> and that's, that's fine because it would actually be a really fun world if everything was steam powered and you like all gears were uh, visible on all of our technology and that would be really cool. So um, they're going to have really attractive accessories that they can, they can use in their, in their everyday wear or their cosplay or, you know, whatever they, they want to use them for. And, and along with other practical items, because all the boxes include practical items, then we have your heathen box which is geared toward people who have more alternative spiritual views or outlooks on life or just enjoy spiritual views and outlooks on life, like myself, because I actually don't have religion, but I have spiritual views and I enjoy learning about and hearing about other people's. So um, any questions thus far? No. Anything? Well I don't want to monopolize the conversation again. No, you're doing fine. <laughs> hmm? You're doing fine. Okay. You're just fine. And then we have the box, the macabre, which is oriented around people who enjoy a bit of horror in their life. And that is also myself. That is me in a nutshell. I really enjoy horror. I actually learned through Travis that neither of you particularly enjoy horror. And I was actually surprised by that because I was like, how are they friends with you? Because you are the darkest person I have ever met in my life. <laughs> He's like, well, it just works out. You know, you have a lot of other yeah. things in common, but, you know, it's a, I think it's something that I connect with Travis on. So I can actually like curl up with him and watch a horror movie and the bloodier, the better, the more twisted, the better. As long as there's no pedophilia in it, I'm okay. Because that's the only thing that really turns my stomach. Um, yeah, so creepy stuff in the, the macabre box, uh, creepy edibles that may or may not turn someone's stomach, depending on just how dark they are and how twisted they are. But, uh, you know, we have, uh, three different values of boxes. There's a $30, a $45 and a $60 option. And you get different things with each one, but, um, I, I would say the uh, the thirty dollars still provides you with quite 
a bunch of really cool stuff since a lot of it is handcrafted by myself. So you're not just getting um, a bunch of like like things that you you can find everywhere. You know, some some things you can find if you look hard enough. But I've eliminated all the the groundwork. I've gone and done my research and done my done my uh, my shopping and you know just found things that people may overlook or just may not think to look for. So uh, I've taken that, I've eliminated that, that obstacle, you know, from people's lives where they're like, Oh, I really want something cool, but I don't know where to look for it. And I don't know what it is. And so I found it and it's in your box and all you have to do is subscribe and you'll get it. So, um, yeah, the $45 boxes, um, have a little more, a little more, variety of items per month and they also include either a gourmet goodie something edible or an aromatic treat which is something that smells delicious and is useful and functional and you know more along the lines of something like a toiletry item but something luxurious and then I've got the $60 box which includes both of those options and uh, either a sterling silver or genuine leather um, piece of jewelry or accessory that again is most likely handcrafted by myself because I like to dabble with with uh, silver and and leather. So um, yeah, it's it's a it's a quite a variety of options. Any questions? <laughs> well, as I said, you, you said earlier there's um, you. Some people order the three month, and you have what one month, three month, six month, nine month, and a year. Is that how that works? Yes, I was I was going to offer that. I didn't offer it on Kickstarter because I wanted to limit the amount of rewards. I didn't want to clutter up the page too much, which it it already is because it's like five different options multiplied by three with like a bunch of other, oh, I didn't say this. Okay, this is really cool. I didn't expect this at all, but I had requests from people from Canada and the UK and Norway. So I've included those options in the reward since, which is like, you know, really fun for me because it's like, there are people who found found this, who emailed me and, and you know, their stories are, really like disappointing to me because they 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 were telling me how in the first place when they're asking like do you ship internationally can you ship to me they're like i like stuff like this i like monthly subscription boxes and the things that i enjoy like are not available to ship to me and when i reach out to the companies they just don't want to do it and i'm like wow that really sucks you know so this is more of um more of like an honor for me to to be filling a need for somebody who really wants this but just cannot get it they said a lot of the american companies just don't ship outside of america they don't want to deal with that they don't like i i i don't understand that you know it's like these people are willing to spend just a like a fraction more for additional shipping so that they can get a good product that they can enjoy and nobody, nobody wanted to take them on. So I was like, all right. And I looked into shipping options. I found the most affordable shipping options. Um, it's not that affordable, but like for, you know, um, a $30 box, if you're going to be spending additional monies on a $30 box, it's just not really a good option because you're not going to get what you should be getting for, for that amount of money because you know you're paying extra but um for 45 and 60 dollar boxes i included options for sh- for international shipping to those three countries so you know people are going to get something that they're really going to treasure and well i hope that's my hope for it is that they really enjoy what they get um and yeah and they'll be happy because somebody took them on you know and why not so we uh we're, we're offering that now and i've uh, i have four canadians who signed on and I think two or three people from the UK who've signed on already. And then the two Norwegians I just responded to because I just added it. And uh, yeah, so 
I'm, ex- I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, they're willing to wait a little longer if their package arrives a couple weeks later, then they're happy with that. They're just happy in general because they come from such small countries. <laughs> they're like, they're like, they're like, I'm in a really small country. Like they're the population of Norway is less than the population of Manhattan. And like yeah. that puts it into perspective, like what resources what retail resources are available to them you know so it's i'm 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 really excited and and i was like thinking in my head like i want to include some really american things in there because i think that they'd get a kick out of it send them some so send Send them them what send them some freedom i'm gonna send them some free some good old-fashioned american thermonuclear bombs (laughs) in a box (laughs) like here's your box of freedom enjoy it (laughs) Um, yeah, so like that's that's gonna be really fun for me to to think of what to put because all the boxes are customized, so I'm gonna think of what to put in there that that I think they'll enjoy. It's very involved for me to to be making these up. Travis is peering at me like a creep. What's up? <laughs> Why are you being creepy? He's being himself. I'll just he's say that totally just being. He's, he's a total psycho, and he's being he's acting just like himself right now. <laughs> Oh, you're so creepy. Come here. Come here. He's laughing at me. All right. I Sounds like he's I getting talk. nervous because he's afraid you're going to replace him on the show. No, because I don't have that much material. <laughs> I'm really bad. I'm too awkward and I'm too dry. That doesn't hurt. We can work with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to replace you on the show. I'm sorry. I just got an offer and I'm taking it. It's like leaving your former band for a new one that's more popular. <laughs> like, sorry guys, I know I was your front man for like ten years, but I got this offer and I'm just leaving you. Isn't that like I don't know oh, you guys don't listen to metal, right? Uh it depends. What do you yeah. listen to? Slayer. <laughs> Metal okay, wise or just Slayer's metal. metal. Yeah. <laughs> I was I was thinking along the lines, and this is terrible, and maybe I'm wrong. I I never I don't look into things because I don't research music. I'm like one of those people that just likes stuff, and then I don't know anything about the bands. I don't even know like the album names or anything. I just like I I'll know all the words and like all the riffs and everything, and I can recite it by like from from my heart. But I cannot tell you one band member name. But um, I think like the the lead from arch enemy i don't know if you're familiar with arch enemy you're probably rolling your eyes (laughs) oh arch enemy (laughs) i love arch enemy i think they're wonderful (laughs) i saw him open dennis is looking down like oh Oh, no i i am not i I listen to some metal but i am not a metal guy i am definitely not Uh, i will admit to that right now i'm more of a uh, my music is taste or bizarre so Aren't you like more more geared around punk, like the punk scene? Uh, uh, so punk ska, a lot of ska. Okay. Jazz. Happy <laughs> upbeat. Country. I mean, I'm all angry bored. fighting music. So, <laughs> depends on my mood. And jazz. Huh? <laughs> oh, I was gonna say jazz. It all depends on my mood. It really does. It all depends on how I feel that day. If I'm feeling a little harder, I'll go to like sheer terror or something like that. And... Or funk. <laughs> Some funk, yes, yeah. That's what and jazz is retarded cousin. Dude, I saw. Dude, I saw, funk is I saw... Uh, no, jazz is funk's retarded cousin. <laughs> funk is awesome. <laughs> I don't care what anybody funk. says. I because yeah, I grew up with Motown and classic rock and and industri- goth industrial. <laughs> That's what I grew up with because I had my parents as my my musical influence. So my sister was heavy into Skinny Puppy and stuff like that and In like Bauhaus. Bauhaus. <laughs> and like Joy Division, <laughs> Joy <Jinx>. Division, <laughs> another band I just learned about today. <laughs> all these, all these wonderful, wonderful bands. Like, so I, I grew up knowing, Whoa. like, listening to The Cure and like Whoa, Susie Sue. So there we go, there we go. <laughs> we've got, tracks. we've got uh, some, uh, some goth going behind me. <laughs> Travis is, Travis is uh, yeah, really heard good him. at being goth. But uh, I grew up with that because um, my sister is eight years my senior. So I was really, really, really little when I was exposed to things. And then at the same time, my father listened to a lot of Motown, like a lot of Motown and classic rock and 
the same with my mother it was like Motown so I'm really like I don't care what anyone says about him as a person um I'm a fan of Michael Jackson <laughs> I really like his music yeah. um I he was never convicted so I can say that I, I, I'm okay with <laughs> <laughs> he was never convicted. The night was OJ, the but OJ was convicted you. later. But Michael Jackson killed himself. So whatever, it it all works out in the end for for music. But he he was he was he was a genius. Oh, I think you're I thinking like of Kurt of Cobain. He wasn't a genius. He was just killed himself. He just yeah. killed himself because he was and people, worthless. People people really liked him because he was brooding. Because he was like he was ultimate goth without being goth. Yeah. And you can't you can't not appreciate someone who's that goth that they kill themselves. And that's terrible, and I hope nobody chastises me for that. But yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> Travis is like lurking. He's like, get out of my chair. <laughs> you look really scary. <laughs> Stop creeping me out. <laughs> Travis is a big Nirvana fan, I think, even to this day. Oh, he just listens to it, it in, his in his car by himself while he cries. In his heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, why, Kurt? Why? Why did you have to leave me so young? <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't have you gotten old and fat and sold McDonald's to me? <laughs> that would have been odd. That's Definitely probably what would have happened. Oh yeah, he would have become like this weird recluse that like worked in McDonald's just to keep himself humble. <laughs> He'd be like the kid from the first Star Wars movie. He would have given up and went away and never heard from again till he got well, a DUI. He was a terrible actor. Well, yeah, that and he got the. <laughs> The only reason people have heard about him recently is he got a DUI like two years ago. Did he? Yeah. What a loser. Yeah. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> not only can you not act, you have no discretion because you're drinking and driving and you're a shit for that. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I have convictions. I'm okay with Michael Jackson. I'm not okay with DUI. <laughs> um, yeah, so goth stuff is fun and that's my plug and i will turn this over to travis and you guys were like really awesome and i'm sorry for stealing everything and apologizing 20 million times no that's all right you're welcome back anytime like next week the week yeah. after yeah like next week Thank don't you. even tell travis just come in and take over the room yeah and then we won't say anything either yep. just, wait. <laughs> just wait for the call we'll show you <laughs> <laughs> you want to come in Come on, come on. You can do, you can. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Get out of my chair. Get out of my chair. Go upstairs. Make me the sandwich. <laughs> Shut up. Well, Travis, looks like we're out of time. <laughs> so I'd say thanks to Hank for listening. Thanks to Chuck. Thanks to Drobo. Doba. Dover's a good guy. Drew. Like Dover. Nova. Dover. I'll remember that. I'd like Dova. to say thanks for, to Thomas like Dolby for listening. <laughs> you blinded with me, you science. And we're out. Bye. All right. Great show. Great show. Hopefully, your computer doesn't crash this time. Yeah, it won't. But when I do go to edit this, I do know what I'm going to do because I don't want to get in trouble for any more copyright infringement. I'm going to take that section where you played the Joy Division or whatever it was, and I'm just going to supplement it with, uh, what's that guy, Marv Albert, the uh, Tijuana Brass? <laughs> Herb Albert. Herb Albert. Marv Albert's the guy who was a lady, dressed as a lady and got caught in that room, right? Yeah, he was that uh, sports announcer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Tijuana Brass copyright? No, I think that one's public domain. Public Hasn't been around.